Day 4 Chronological Bible in a Year Genesis chapters 10, 11, and 12 Chapter 10 This is the account of the families of Shem, Ham, and Japheth, the three sons of Noah. Many children were born to them after the great flood. The descendants of Japheth were Gomer, Magog, Madai, Javon, Tubal, Meshech, and Tyrus. The descendants of Gomer were Ashkenaz, Riphath, and to Togermah. The descendants of Javon were Elisha, Tarshish, Kittim, and Rodanim. Their descendants became the seafaring peoples that spread out to various lands, each identified by its own language, clan, and national identity. The descendants of Ham were Cush, Mizraim, Put, and Canaan. The descendants of Cush were Seba, Havilah, Sabta, Rama, and Septica. The descendants of Rama were Sheba and Dedan. Cush was also the ancestor of Nimrod, who was the first heroic warrior on earth. Since he was the greatest hunter in the world, his name became proverbial. People would say, this man is like Nimrod, the greatest hunter in the world. He built his kingdom in the land of Babylonia, with the cities of Babylon, Erech, Akkad, and Kauna. From there, he expanded his territory to Assyria, building the cities of Nineveh, Rehobothur, Kela, and Rezin, the great city located between Nineveh and Kela. Mizraim was the ancestor of the Ludites, Anamites, Leabites, Naphtuhites, Paphrusites, Kasluhites, and the Kaphtarites, from whom the Philistines came. Canaan's oldest son was Sidon, the ancestor of the Sidonians. Canaan was also the ancestor of the Hittites, Jebusites, Amorites, Girgashites, Hivites, Archites, Senites, Arvidites, Zemurites, and Hamathites. The Canaanite clan eventually spread out, and the territory of Canaan extended from Sidon in the north to Gerar and Gaza, Gaza in the south, and east as far as Sodom, Gomorrah, Adma, and Zob Zoboim near Lasha. These were the descendants of Ham, identified by clan, language, territory, and national identity. Sons were also born to Shem, the older brother of Japheth. Shem was the ancestor of all the descendants of Eber. The descendants of Shem were Elam, Asher, Arphaxed, Lud, and Aram. The descendants of Aram were Uz, Hol, Gether, and Mash. Arphaxed was the father of Shelah, and Shelah was the father of Eber. Eber had two sons. The first was named Peleg, which means division, for during his lifetime the people of the world were divided into different language groups. His brother's name was Joktan. Joktan was the ancestor of Amadad, Shelah, Hazarmaveth, Jira, Hadoram, Uzal, Dikla, Obal, Abimiel, Sheba, Ophir, Havilah, and jo Jobab. All these were descendants of Joktan. The territory they occupied extended from Mesha all the way to Sephar in the eastern mountains. These were the descendants of Shem, identified by clan, language, territory, and national identity. These are the clans that descended from Noah's sons, arranged by nation according to their lines of descent. All the nations of the earth descended from these clans after the Great Flood. Chapter 11 at one time, all the people of the world spoke the same language and used the same words. As the people migrated to the east, they found a plain in the land of Babylonia and settled there. They began saying to each other, let's make bricks and harden them with fire. In this region, bricks were used instead of stone and tar was used for mortar. Then they said, come, let's build a great city for ourselves with a tower that reaches into the sky. This will make us famous and keep us from being scattered all over the world. But the Lord came down to look at the city and the tower the people were building. Look, he said, the people are united and they all speak the same language. After this, nothing they set out to do will be impossible for them. Come, let's go down and confuse the people with different languages. Then they won't be able to understand each other. In that way, the Lord scattered them all over the world and they stopped building the city. That is why the city was called Babel, because that is where the Lord confused the people with different languages. 
In this way, he scattered them all over the world. This is the account of Shem's family. Two years after the great flood, when Shem was 100 years old, he became the father of Arphaxad. After the birth of Arphaxad, Shem lived another 500 years and had other sons and daughters. When Arphaxad was 35 years old, he became the father of Shelah. After the birth of Shelah, Arphaxad lived another 403 years and had other sons and daughters. When Shelah was 30 years old, he became the father of Eber. After the birth of Eber, Shelah lived another 403 years and had other sons and daughters. When Eber was 34 years old, he became the father of Peleg. After the birth of Peleg, Eber lived another 430 years and had other sons and daughters. When Peleg was 30 years old, he became the father of Ru. After the birth of Ru, Peleg lived another 209 years and had other sons and daughters. When Ru was 32 years old, he became the father of Serug. After the birth of Serug, Ru lived another 207 years and had other sons and daughters. When Serug was 30 years old, he became the father of Nahor. After the birth of Nahor, Serug lived another 200 years and had other sons and daughters. When Nahor was 29 years old, he became the father of Terah. After the birth of Terah, Nahor lived another 119 years and had other sons and daughters. After Terah was 70 years old, he became the father of Abram, Nahor, and Haran. This is the account of Terah's family. Terah was the father of Abram, Nahor, and Haran, and Haran was the father of Lot. But Haran died in Ur of the Chaldeans, the land of his birth, while his father Terah was still living. Meanwhile, Abram and Nahor both married. The name of Abram's wife was Sarai, and the name of Nahor's wife was Milcah. Milcah and her sister Iscah were daughters of Nahor's brother Haran. But Sarai was unable to become pregnant and had no children. One day, Terah took his son Abram, his daughter-in-law Sarai, his son Abram's wife, and his grandson Lot, his son Haran's child, and moved away from Ur of the Chaldeans. He was headed for the land of Canaan, but they stopped at Haran and settled there. Terah lived for 205 years and died while still in Haran. Chapter 12 The Lord had said to Abram, Leave your native country, your relatives, and your family's family, and go to the land that I will show you. I will make you into a great nation. I will bless you and make you famous, and you will be a blessing to others. I will bless those who bless you and curse those who treat you with contempt. All the families on earth will be blessed through you. So Abram departed as the Lord had instructed, and Lot went with him. Abram was seventy-five years old when he left Haran. He took his wife Sarai, his nephew Lot, and all his wealth, his livestock, and all the people he had taken into his household at Haran, and headed for the land of Canaan. When they arrived in Canaan, Abram traveled through the land as far as Shechem. There he set up camp beside the oak of Morah. At that time, the area was inhabited by Canaanites. Then the Lord appeared to Abram and said, I will give this land to your descendants. And Abram built an altar there and dedicated it to the Lord who had appeared to him. After that, Abram traveled south and set up camp in the hill country with Bethel to the west and Ai to the east. There he built another altar and dedicated it to the Lord, and he worshipped the Lord. Then Abram continued traveling south by stages toward the Negev. At that time, a severe famine struck the land of Canaan, forcing Abram to go down to Egypt, where he lived as a foreigner. As he was approaching the border of Egypt, Abram said to his wife Sarai, Look, you are a very beautiful woman. When the Egyptians see you, they will say, This is his wife. Let's kill him, then we can have her. So please tell them you are my sister. Then they will spare my life and treat me well because of, the, because of their interest in you. And sure enough, when Abram arrived in Egypt, everyone noticed Sarai's beauty. When the palace officials saw her, they sang her praises to Pharaoh, their king, and Sarai was taken into his palace. Then Pharaoh gave Abram many gifts because of her, sheep, goats, cattle, male and female donkeys, male and female servants, and camels. But the Lord sent terrible plagues upon Pharaoh and his household because of Sarai, Abram's wife. So Pharaoh summoned Abram and accused him sharply. What have you done to me? He demanded. Why didn't you tell me she was your wife? 
Why did you say she is my sister and allow me to take her as my wife? Now then, here is your wife. Take her and get out of here. Pharaoh ordered some of his men to escort them, and he sent Abram out of the country, along with his wife and all his possessions.